two years ago, I bought this 500 horsepower Toyota Cresta drift car. Today, we're gonna to pull the cover off and see what kind of condition it's in. I hope it starts. What you're looking at here is a Toyota JZX100 Cresta Rulant G that's been turned into a drift car. This particular one has had the engine converted from the 2.5 litre 1JZ to the 3 litre 1.5JZ, which is when you get the 3 litre 2JZ block and bottom end and pistons and all that and put the 1J head on top of that. So it's a 3 litre. So this body type is a Cresta. And for those of you who are still new to this sort of stuff, you don't know like which one is which. Basically, there's three different versions of the X100 chassis in particular, the Chaser, Cresta, and Mark II. And this one is the Cresta. So what's the difference, you may ask? Well, mechanically, they're all pretty similar. Actually, there is one big difference with the Cresta. Only the Cresta has framed doors. The other ones are frameless windows. But apart from that, there was a bit of a difference in sort of the image and marketing of the three different cars. I think people are most familiar with the Chaser because that's the one that appears in video games the most. The Chaser is the sports executive model. And if you look at the headlights, they really, really, really look like a BMW E36, sort of. So essentially the Chaser is the type of person who would buy a BMW, but they're buying domestic. And if you look at the logo badge on the Chaser, it's, uh, it's a bow and arrow. Next one is the Mark II, which I also used to own. I actually still have the grill from it. I'll tell you a story about that car in a minute. The Mark II badge is shield shaped with a star on it. See, it kind of looks like a, a medieval style shield. The Mark II was that inoffensive middle of the road car, uh, the sort of thing your dad would drive. And it also filled that space in Toyota's model lineup. You know, it'd go Corolla, Camry, Mark II, then Crown and sort of over here Aristo and then like Century above that, that sort of thing. So then we come to the Cresta. So where does this car sit in the Toyota ecosystem? Well, this is the sort of person who would have bought a Mercedes Benz, but wants to buy domestic. Of course, this car has some flares and a body kit on it, but just in general, the, the body styling was just a bit muted. You know, you had two-tone uh, paint, which is a lot more common in this particular model. And these were only sold automatic from the factory, even the turbo model were only automatic. Of course, this one's been converted with a, a five-speed though. And if you look at the logo on the grill, that is uh, a Japanese Kabuto Samurai helmet, which normally looks like this. So why did I buy this car and why has it been sitting here for so long? Well, for long-term viewers of the channel, you might remember a long time ago, I had a JZX100 Mark II drift car. I just finished having everything done on it except you know, the body kit and the body and the paint, basically. Brand new turbo, brand new ECU, cams, the whole front end of the engine, all the seals and everything had been replaced. Brand new suspension, wheels, bushings, everything had been done. Then unfortunately, the paint shop it was in just burned to the ground with the car inside it. I didn't really know what to do after that and I really still wanted a JZX. And the owner of Rasti, Arita-san, told me that there was a customer who wanted to sell his car that he'd done all the work on. So I kind of took his word for it and bought that. It's been sitting here so long because I really wanted to buy an S15 Silvia as well before they got too expensive after they became legal in America. So I bought that and I've been driving that a lot, but honestly, it's time for this. And believe it or not, I actually have some history with this car from about 15 years ago. Back in 2009, I entered round three of a competition called MSC at Nico Circuit. I was in beginner class uh, in my old black R32 GDST that I owned back then. I qualified fifth and ended up coming fourth, but the car that came in first in the same class as me was this car being driven by the previous owner. I found that out because I found the previous owner's like blog from back in the day and it sort of showed all that. So I was like, oh, that's that, I remember that car, that's the guy who won, now here it is. So what we need to do first is see if it starts, and I know pretty much for a fact it's not going to, but we have to do it anyway. Yeah, it's not even... That's dead. Yeah, that is dead dead. All right, well I guess we go put this on the charger while we uh, do some other things. 
so it has a old school external wastegate Honeywell something or other turbo. I don't know the exact specs of it. Uh, but I got a brand new Link G4X uh, ECU replacement done at Rusty's. They put it on the hub dyno and tuned it so it was all okay and safe. 500 horsepower. And with how much torque does it have? I just checked. 74 kilos or 535 foot pounds of torque. So that's the link in there. Uh, it has the tuning cable, which goes into that, and also this, which is the, uh, the vacuum line for the turbo actuator. So it all runs off this. Uh, you don't need an external boost controller. You can have one, but you don't need one. And I figured, you know, since it was only just gonna be a basic setup to start with, I wasn't gonna run one. So here's something I wanna show you, and we've already found lots of jank on this car. And there's going to be more to come, I'm sure, but look at this. Uh, normally gas struts, these things, but as you can see, they're just struts now with no gas in them. And look at how the previous owner stopped it from flopping down. He drilled these little holes in the strut, and he's got a split pin here on a piece of wire, and it goes in like that, and then like that. So the original goal was that the S15 Sylvia was gonna go off the road and get some work done to it. And I was gonna street register this and then go to the 1JZ meeting, which happened a while ago, but then uh, the schedule changed. I ended up going to America, lost a week. And then I just sort of thought, no, I won't do it now. I'm just gonna take it to the track like this and see go what goes wrong with it. I, Cause you know, you just don't know. Like I didn't wanna have to do all this cause street registering a car in Japan is a massive pain in the ass, especially something like this when you have like the external wastegate and all the suspension and stuff like that. Also something happened that will allow me to take unregistered cars like this to the track a lot easier. People who follow me on Instagram already know why. But there's two goals for today. One is to just see if it starts and runs like it's supposed to. And the second is I just, I know there's a bunch of stuff in this car that I hate about it. And you know when there's something about a car that you don't like and it just makes you not want to touch it? I want to change a couple of things today. So. Kind of a low bar to pass today, but we're gonna hear turbo noises by the end, hopefully. But for now, the overall goal of this car is to be a street registered street car, which means full interior, no uh, roll cage or anything like that. You never know how, like, how a car's gonna spiral though. So the Rulan G came with the charcoal gray interior, like this, instead of the uh, disgusting, you know, tan, brown sort of interior uh, that most of them came in because they were mostly the lower spec model. I mean, it is still very you know, 90s Toyota. And as you can see, manual, not automatic. Also the brake lights in this model, uh, the later model Cresta had like an extra section of brake light there, but I, I really like this sort of low key rear end. The first thing I wanna do is change the mirrors. You can see this side, I've already taken it off. I already started like a long time ago. These mirrors, which I don't know what they're for, they have like a built-in indicator on the side here and they just, they don't even fit. I don't know what they're for, but I'm gonna change these straight away because I can't stand them. We have to do something while the battery charges, you know. All right, I got some from the parts place and unfortunately, as you can see, they're different colors and also the glass. Like this one's kind of that blue tinted. This is the regular one, but I don't care. I like these more than, uh, than the other ones. I think I bought the right, there we go. Unfortunately, the new mirror plug doesn't go in the old mirror plug, but that will probably never get fixed. What the hell is this? And these are only held on with two bolts. Don't drop it down the door hole. There we go. Ugh. Look, they drilled extra holes to put these on. Come on, man. All right, there's an extra wire here going into here. I'm guessing it's to power these, which they don't work to begin with. Well, we'll figure that out later, I guess. There we go. That already looks a million times better. Beautiful. That's a lot better. All right, here's our next bit of jank. Uh, this oversized wiring for the, 
I'm guessing these were, yeah, they're taped into the uh, indicators down here. I'm just gonna cut them off and tape them up. They're both red, by the way, which is good. So on this side too, what even is this? What's this? Some sort of, is that a speaker box? What is that? Let me show you a cool trick in 2024. Google Lens, oh, there it is. Oh, okay, you can use your parking lights as indicators. Yeah, okay, well, we're not gonna need that. Next thing to do is change the fuel because that's been sitting there for like two years and I do not trust uh, running boost through this fuel. So we're gonna change it and the easiest way, well, I mean, I don't know about easiest, but it's how I'm gonna do it. Oh, yeah, also, this is one of the headlights and this is something I need to fix to get the car registered. See how it's all uh, hazy, that will not pass. And for some reason, the previous owner put these extremely cool black pinstripes on there. And you can see right here where it's still like clear, that's where the pinstripe was. See if I pull this one off. Yeah, so I don't know, I'm gonna have to sand this back or something. This is how it should look like that. So this is the one I've got now. Uh, I just got some secondhand uh, Grande ones. But you can see too, these are two completely different headlights. They're both Cresta, but this uh, is the turbo model and this is the non-turbo model with only two. No HID, factory HID with a rusty bottom. So I'm gonna have to polish those or do something, which is always fun because every single car YouTuber does that at some point. Oh, what's the best way to clear your headlights? And the best way is just to buy some new ones. Uh, screwdriver and a rag. Also a good thing about doing it from back here is you're not gonna spill fuel in your interior if you mess up. Well, I see this little harness here. This is the fuel level sender. And um, this always breaks because people take the interior out but they don't like shield this and stuff in the trunk will start rubbing on it and break it. It happens to almost everybody. Yay, that is basically full. It's like milking a cow. And it took like two and a half of these. There was like 50 liters in there. I remember straight after I bought it, I went and filled it up at the petrol station, so. Our right, tank looks perfect. That's good. All right, one step closer to firing it up, some fresh fuel. All right, while we're still waiting for the battery to charge, I wanna show you the absolutely ridiculous brakes this thing has. They're 370 millimeter Brembos. I think those might be either Aristo or Supra brakes on the back too. Uh, the previous owner had sort of a scuba time attack phase at some point, so he put these on. Now these are way, way, way too big for a drift car. But behind the right wheels, they could look really cool, so I'm not really sure what to do. If I could put stock ones back on. But uh, it's been done properly because it has the Toyota Supra master cylinder and brake boosters. So that's good because you're not gonna get weird brake pressure because the standard cylinder is meant for much smaller pistons so it runs at a higher pressure. So this is cool, but uh, I don't know really know what to do with it. These are kind of expensive too. I should just sell them. And uh, Also, it's got some sort of old, uh, Meister R is Rasti's old brand, but uh, they're kind of, I, mean, I don't know. They could be okay, I don't know. I'll just try them out and see what happens. It also has uh, extended arms and knuckles of some description. Right now on the back, it has these uh, 18 inch CR Kai's with 265 tires on them that I had left over from my old Mark II. These are the wheels that were on the back. Uh, these are some uh, Weds uh, SA70 TTs in a pretty nice offset, honestly. And a bit of a tire stretch there with two, three, fives, but I've only got one pair of them. These came with the car, so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with them. And of course, everyone's favorite uh, NK RPF ones in 18 inch. Now I know not many people are a big fan of these, but I like them because they're so lightweight. And these will also fit on the front. Those huge brakes will actually fit under here. Uh, I'll need to change these tires though. They're 265, 35, so they're a bit too big, but, but just for the uh, you know, first time out, I'm gonna run these and the old CR Kai's on the back, just for now. I just wanna drive it. Also, if you've been thinking, uh, you know, what are you gonna do with the car? Like paint it or body kit or what? Uh, this is a Ito Auto 
body kit, uh, front fender, rear door, and rear fender. And it's already like that much wider. So I should be able to fit some bigger wheels, but yeah, I have a full kit for this already. The kit that's on there right now is the Vertex kit, but um, the one that most people run on the front is that half spoiler one that goes on the standard bumper. Like that seems to be the, the best looking one for Crestor anyway. And this is the one that goes on the rear like that. It's like a two piece wide body. Should be good. I mean, the fenders are already cut. Let me know in the comments what color you think I should paint it. Most of these look best in black or candy red or orange or yellow. I think are probably the best colors. I don't know about the two-tone. What do you think? I don't know. Next thing I want to do is change out this steering wheel. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Uh, it's actually a Rusty Meister R, which is their sort of tuning brand. Uh, same as the carbon hood on this, same as the suspension but I have something cooler. Serial 9 Arcadia, it is stitched on the front and back, and also Norio Custom, right there. Thanks, Gerard. And we got these little anodized custom engraved bolts as well. Horn button to match. Okay, it comes with, uh, with looms and stuff, but I'm gonna do that another time, because I couldn't be bothered doing it now. There we go, nice. Serial Knight also sent one of their shift knobs, but again, I will do that another time. All right, battery is good enough for a test fire. And there's some ground wire there. I don't know what it's for. I think it might be for the, uh, might be for those HIDs. Okay. Oh, you know what we need to do first? Oh, there's that beeping. Yeah. Tilted at all times, even in the rain. That's the rule. Also, one other thing before we start it up. Also, because there's a 50-50 chance it's going to leak all over the place, I'll just chuck this just under the middle there because it'll at least uh, catch something if it starts to leak. Okay, fuel pump works. It's out of gear. All right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> First crank. <laughs> Too good. That sounds really good. Let's just leave it there. So uh, I think it has some sort of aftermarket fan. I actually have a brand new fan clutch as well to go on, which uh, is a good idea. Um, I think that alternator there is like one of Rasty's like underdrive ones that works better at high revs. And one thing I was just looking at this, I'm kind of worried about is on the power steering pump, or the power steering system in general, like every single line is somewhat, looks like it's leaking or like it was leaking, but it's not anymore. And I'm sort of curious about that. Oh, okay, maybe it is leaking. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Okay, well, that's kind of, I think we'll get rid of that. Blech. Somewhere in the power steering is a bit suspicious, but the rest of the car looks all right, honestly. Also, I came in here today with extremely low expectations and everything turned out fine. It's, you know, this car's been sitting here for two years under a cover. I didn't think it would work. I don't know, maybe something went wrong with it. It's been sitting under a cover. Actually, let me show you something. It's been marinating in cigarette smell this whole time. I just noticed this before. Look. Bleh. So the next step's gonna to be to get some tires on it and take it to the track. It's currently unregistered, but like I said before, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know that that is no longer a problem. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see what's gonna happen with this and all the other cars in the upcoming episodes. Pretty soon the Skyline's gonna be here too. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.